it's clear that uh, natural selection um, has, uh, by modifying our genes, has, um, has shaped the structure and function of our bodies. Everyone knows this. Uh, and uh, has also shaped the structure and function of our minds and hence our behaviors. But the argument I make in Blueprint is that natural selection has also shaped the structure and function of our societies. It's shaped how we live together. It's endowed us with all of these, these properties. And there are eight key properties that I call the social suite. They include love and friendship and cooperation and teaching and uh, social networks. Uh, there are these eight things that we are sort of genetically programmed is not exactly the right word, but that's the essence of it. In other words, these are, these are qualities that are encoded in our genes that we are impelled to manifest that, um, that we express between people. For example, you could be brave by yourself, mm -hmm. right? You could be brave in fighting against an animal or, or coping with a, a natural disaster. Uh, that's an individualistic quality, but you can't really, uh, you know, befriend yourself. You have to befriend another human being. So, so the qualities that I'm interested in, these social qualities or these properties are qualities that we express inter-individually. Uh, things like friendship and love, for example, or cooperation. You can't really cooperate with yourself. You need another human being to cooperate with. And it's all of those qualities that um, allow us to live socially that I'm focused on. There are two broad ways in which we are affected by the social ties around us. It, actually, there's more than two, but the two key ways are contagion effects and also connection effects. So contagion effects is just the basic realization that when I affect you, that effect doesn't stop with you. You can go on to affect others. And therefore, I indirectly could come to affect many people. I quit smoking. It changes the probability that my friends will quit smoking. And so, uh, so they then might quit, or at least some of them might quit, and, they, and those individuals in turn might affect their friends. So when I make a positive move in my life, it can ripple out for me and affect, depending on the outcome, uh, a few or dozens or sometimes hundreds of other people. So, for right. example, you may, early in the epidemic, you might not have COVID and your friends might not have COVID, but your friends, friends, friends might have the virus. And the fact that those individuals unknown to you who are, you know, four degrees of separation from you, your friends, 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 friends are ill, means that the virus is inexorably going to wind its way through the network and reach you. So your fate is connected to the fate of these people that you don't even know you know, that are far away from you in the network. And it's not just with viral illnesses that that's the case. It's with so many things that that's the case. Uh, so, so germs flow within networks. Money flows within networks. Emotions flow within networks. Knowledge and ideas flow within networks. Uh, behaviors flow within networks. All of those are contagion effects. But there's another way we're affected by networks as well. Uh, it, we're not just affected by what's flowing through the network. We're actually affected by the structure of the network. And I can, I can give a metaphor for that, which I think is, is helpful. And that's the metaphor of carbon. Uh, and as most people learned in high school chemistry, um, there are a couple of, at least a couple of forms of carbon. You can arrange the carbon atoms one way and you get graphite, which is soft and dark. Or you take the same carbon atoms and arrange them another way and you get diamond, which is hard and clear. Right. And, uh, and there are two key intellectual ideas there. Uh, the first is that this, these properties of softness and darkness and hardness and clearness aren't properties of the carbon atoms. They're properties of the collection of carbon atoms. Right. Again, not the individual, but the That's social. right. And second, which properties you get depends on how you connect the carbon atoms to each other. Take the same carbon atoms, connect them one way, you get one set of properties. Connect them another way, you get a completely right. different set of properties. And it's the same with human groups. You can take a group of people and connect them one way, and they're really sweet to each other or take the same people with their same inclination to be nice, but connect them another way and they're mean to each other, which means that the properties of niceness and meanness aren't only properties of individuals, they're properties of groups that can arise from the pattern of connections. I'll give you one more example, uh, a very simple example. Uh, a, 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 a sociologist colleague of mine by the name of Peter Behrman and one of his colleagues looked, a study, did a paper where they looked at suicidal ideation in, in girls which is a big problem nowadays. And they looked at the, the structure of the friendships in, in groups of girls. So imagine that you have a, a, a Becky, and Becky can have two friends, Susie and Jane. And, and so you have, here's Becky, and here's Susie, and here's Jane. And now there are two possibilities. Susie 
and Jane can be friends with each other, or they might not be friends with each other. We still have Becky, Sue, and Jane. The only difference is whether there are structurally, the pattern of structural right. connections. And it turns out that Becky is more likely to consider taking her own life if Susan and Jane are not friends mm. than if they are friends. It's not who Becky, Susan, and Jane are. It's the pattern of connections that affects okay. Becky's fate. So these, these two broad effects, contagion and connection, are, are fundamental aspects of human experience. And, and I'll say one more thing. The, the particular pattern of connections, we've studied this actually, we've looked at historical evidence and we've also studied this, we've, we've mapped networks all around the world. We've mapped networks among the Hadza hunter-gatherers in Tanzania. We've ma mapped them amongst the Nyangatom in Sudan. We've mapped them in India. We've mapped them in Honduras. We've mapped them in the United States. We've, we've gone all over the world and we've mapped the structure of human social networks. And again and again, that structure is the same. If you could have talked to my Greek grandmother who grew up in southern Greece a hundred years ago, she was a girl, more than a hundred, and you asked her, well, when you were a little girl, when you were 10 or 11, how many friends did you have? She would say, I had one or two best friends and there were four or five of us girls that were close. But right. if you could ask my daughter Lena the same question when she was 11 and she had an iPhone in her pocket, she would give you the same answer. I have one or two best friends, there are four or five of us girls we hang out. So there's something very deep and fundamental about our proclivity to friendship, our capacity to have one best friend or two best friends. That's encoded in our genes. Sure. I, I'm interested in the following fact that, you know, when you go or, or when you travel, and all of us have had this experience, you travel to another part of the world, and initially the, it seems very alien there. These people eat different food. They worship different gods. They have different politics, and the, the smells in the street are different, and it, this, these people seem so different than us. And then you spend a little time in that country and you're like, oh my God, their children play in the streets. The people right. love each other. They're hanging out with their friends. They tell jokes. They have schools where they teach their young. You realize that there's, there's these deep fundamental aspects of our common humanity that are the same everywhere. And that's what I'm interested in.